Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. What is going on? It's your boy, the 33 Welcome you to this week's Anarchy Analysis Results and Predictions video. Today, we're covering week three results and the week four predictions. All in all, some big games to go over here. And it's going to be a very interesting set of games that we're going to be running down results for. The first game this week to cover is Excel and Schalke 0 Fear taking to the rift. These two teams bottom of the table right now and one team was obviously slightly lower than the other and that was Schalke and in this game XL drafted a high engage comp that built a strong early game lead and then turned into a very clean Baron take and then Cloud Soul to follow it up. This game was very very dominant from XL from start to finish which they won. I did go with them as well, so that plus is one to the predictions. Game 2 this week was a back and forth matchup between Misfits and Vitality, of which Vitality controlled the early game till around 10 minutes up until Misfits turning it around, getting the goalie for themselves, and at this point, Kale was essentially getting way too fed on the Misfits side. Dan Dan was just building up strength. And it's very hard to deal with a Kale that gets to late game with the scaling comp that Misfits had drafted. Vitality, though, did a very good patient Baron take. It actually secured them a pretty big win here and beat the Vitality squad that I did predict to win. Game 3 saw SK and G2 taking to the rift here. In a matchup that G2 drafted for the late game with a main priority on a Cassadin in the mid lane to set up roam plays once he hit level 16, but it didn't really reach that far as SK's control over objectives and G2, G2 trying to force to take SK's Baron, but it was so hard for them when you have a Kassa so far behind because he was stuck under turret for so long, SK actually beat G2 here, upsetting my prediction and beating probably one of the strongest teams in the league. Following that matchup is Mad vs Origin, in the game that Origin get their Rome game TF ahead early with First Blood. This is obviously then in favour of OG at this point, but Mad's response to how OG pressured the map was very well done in this game, and it evened out the gold that was gained by OG, and as well as this, Ori picked up a lot of kills in that mid lane, Humanoid got fed, even though Kale on Alfari's hands essentially was allowed to scale up freely, then it comes into the mid game, Ori picks up a kill onto the Kale, shutting her down, getting the Ori into a great position with a Baron buff being taken by Mad. And from there, TF over aggresses when Mad obviously are pushing into the turret and the base of OG. Nuke Duck tries to set up a play, TPs behind all of Mad and immediately gets punished for it. They turn onto him, they kill him, and that's the game over to Mad beating out OG. Mad doing very good against the top teams currently, and considering they beat OG, a team they didn't get to best of five in Spring Split, this was a great showing for the Mad Lions, and one that I think should prove to people why they're considered a top team. The last matchup in the LEC on Friday saw Fnatic and Rogue taking to the Rift. The boys in blue versus the team that's dominant since day one, the F Season 1 World Champs Fnatic. This kind of was a protect the ADC comp for Fnatic. The style that they were wanting to play or fans were wanting them to play last week instead of Reckless playing Sorokas, which really didn't work. But obviously, it was a protect the Fnatic carry comp versus the split push engage comp that Rogue drafted. Rogue forced top hard for two kills, getting themselves ahead early. Really, really nicely done. 
and the Olaf early game objectives essentially carried them through. Even though, in the end, we see Fnatic kind of faltering a bit, not playing to the strength of this team comp where they want to scale, protecting the carry, they essentially dive the bot lane turret stupidly and give over kills needlessly to MAD without getting really anything and it was a really bad dive rogue catch out fanatic with the thrash hooks every single time that hook was thrown pretty sure it landed onto a fanatic member that was key and realistically won rogue this game this gave them baron this gave them the soul and yeah rogue beat Fnatic here, surprising my prediction, and going into the big game t on the Saturday being G2 versus Fnatic, one of these two teams are gonna finish 0-2 this week, and yeah, this is an interesting game to end out day one, let's jump over to day two. Day two was kicked off by the Anarchy Analysis match of the week. SK versus at Vitality. This matchup, I felt that Vitality was going to win. And if you want to know my opinion on everything, I'll link in the description the actual coverage of the game that I did. It's a full game cast, so you hear my opinion on every single play that happens. I know. I know everyone loves hearing my voice, but why not hear it for over 30 minutes? But yep, Vitality won this. I predicted them to win. Good prediction overall for me. The second game on Saturday saw XL Misfits taking to the rift against each other. These two teams looking to play a different style as XL drafted a split push comp, whereas Misfits drafted a very high engaged teamfight comp. And essentially, Misfits kept getting caught out by XL and then punished, giving XL a bit of a lead. But what ended up happening was Misfits out executed the, a team fight against XL and essentially won the game off that team fight pretty easily from it, I should say, and won this matchup. That skirmish was then followed up by what people would consider a stomp game from predicting it. Schalke vs OG. Schalke drafted a lot of roam into their comp, which obviously works quite well against Origin, a team that obviously looks to focus objectives, but OG got a good disengage comp so that they could respond to the roam by getting themselves away while obviously securing the objectives they wanted. And essentially, OG kept threatening topside, trying to get picks on Odawamne all the time and trying to keep him down and behind to get Alfari the lead that he needs to obviously play well. But pick for pick kept happening throughout the entirety of the game, one for ones, two for twos here and there. But one thing that was certain that was happening was Upset was getting more and more fed. And Upset getting his kills, getting his items that he needed, got OG the win here. And Upset essentially won this game for OG. Very good performance from OG overall. It's a standard game for them. And yeah, a very good performance to say the least. It's now time for the battle of the top of the table. Mad versus Rogue. These two teams coming in with the exact same record. Both teams looking to take the top spot for themselves, have it just for themselves, without the other being neck to neck on them. And we see Ivan and Alawi, two picks that we haven't seen that much in the spring or now in summer and Ivan kind of got a level 3 first blood yeah it's pretty good when you get your support jungler ahead because that allows him to get other lanes ahead and mad kept using the dive comp they had versus the poke and team fight split push team of rogue it's very very nicely executed here by mad as Mad's zone control kept them ahead and kept Rogue away from them 
and controlling the map as best as they could. It allowed a lot of the engage for Mad, and when Mad kill a jungler, they just get free barons, and that's essentially what happens in this game. They get a baron for free, and yeah, they win the game, Mad, taking the top spot for themselves. A great game. Overall, I did predict this correctly, and now we get into the match of the quote-unquote week. Now, that matchup was obviously G2 versus Fnatic, and G2 drafted a Rome comp, no Cassidy to be in sight, though a TF was there, and he made big presence on the map for G2, and the CC that G2 drafted obviously had to be countered by a Fnatic comp that was very responsive to how G2 wanted to play. And what we ended up seeing was Wonder in the top lane getting ahead and taking Nemesis out of the game every fight. Wonder played a fantastic Mordekaiser and essentially every team fight that G2 took, Galio was not able to be a part of it for Fnatic essentially no taunts coming through onto G2 members, only Wonder essentially, and his grand entrance by the Galio was essentially nullified entirely throughout the game, and when you're playing a 4v5 essentially, G2 are obviously going to win this and won this game in big style against a team, the caliber of Fnatic, making them go 0-2 this week. Big game. And yeah, let's jump across the seas to the LCS. Game 1 on Friday Night League was our Anarchy Analysis Match of the Week. FlyQuest taking on CLG as we did a full game breakdown, I do believe, for this one. So be sure to check that out. This one, we went with Fly and Fly beat G CLG in a very close matchup. I felt that either team could take it here, but no. FlyQuest win and continue a very strong streak of games. The game to follow it, many considered to be the actual match of the week. C9 versus Team Liquid. These two teams take to the Rift and one overcommit by C9 around the Rift Herald gave over TL three kills and people thought here this is going to be C9's first loss this split. And well, no it wasn't. What ended up happening was C9 focusing out on Drake's and getting the Ocean Soul, a very powerful Drake Soul, probably the most powerfulest or the therapy Drake Soul as most people in the LCS call it. Very powerful and C9 just poked out TL at every single opportunity after getting Ocean Soul. And if TL tried to poke back, boom, heals coming through from Ocean Soul kept C9 alive and gave them a pretty big win against a component that people thought were going to beat them. The first game on Saturday was CLG vs 100 Thieves, both teams drafting for team fights, looking to obviously fight each other very, very highly in terms of the play. 100 Thieves though played a very good objective control game throughout the early game, getting themselves Drakes and Heralds, but yet again, 100 Thieves overcommit, and this game essentially was the Poe Belter show. He popped off through the entirety of this game and gave the win to CLG on a silver platter. Very nicely done here, and one matchup that I got correct in predictions. Game 2 on Saturday saw TSM and EG facing off. This game would be kind of the testing point for TSM to see where they actually fit on the scale. As most people saw, Evil Geniuses is probably the second best team in the LCS at the current standard of play. Now, this game, TSM drafted a Rome comp with how We've seen TSM play through the entirety of the past few years. Roaming isn't something that you'd know him for. But TSM bait an early Herald against EG, and this is where the ball starts rolling in their favor. This kind of brings the aggro onto the Karma on EG's side, and she gets immediately killed off, allowing TSM a pretty much easy time through the entirety of the game right now. 
and they pick up a win here against EG in a very nice fashion. Team Liquid versus Dignitas is the next game on this day. And all I put in my notes for this game was Team Liquid split push for the game. Essentially, Dig kind of just got absolutely dominated by this TL side. It wasn't a close matchup, and TL just split pushed them to the Nexus and destroyed it with ease, pretty much. The last game on Saturday saw IMT versus Golden Guardians in a matchup that people thought would be a stomp for CLG, including myself, but IMT made the switch up here. They brought the quote unquote Academy team, the team that has Apollo, Hakuo, and also probably the second most winning LCS player in the current season in Xmithy 2, the starting lineup. And yeah, when you've got that caliber player playing for you in this matchup, of course IMT is going to win this, their first win of this split as they brought in the big guns finally into their starting roster. It's a shame though that they could have obviously started off the season a bit more hotter with what they played, but this was a good win and it's a great starting point for this roster. Looking forward into the rest of this split. The last day of games in the LCS was kicked off with an absolute banger of a clown fiesta. TSM versus 100 Thieves. I went with TSM here and I really don't need to say why this is such an interesting game. TSM drafted a Blitzcrank. That's all I need to say. This Blitzcrank saved TSM heavily getting first blood into the late game where TSM were on the cusp of losing. Losing out on Baron Steals and everything through the entirety of the game. This Blitzcrank gets the best hook flashing forward for it and then TSM have to fight for Elder. They do have the Dragon Soul at this point, which I don't remember what it was, but let's just say TSM use this Blitz to perfection, and what ends up happening is Bjergsen goes for the back door. And that back door, ladies and gentlemen, was so big, TSM pick up a win here against 100 Thieves. A win that looked on the cusp of losing to 100 Thieves, but a great win nonetheless if you're a TSM fan. Welcome to Niski Punishing Alorum version 1.0 as C9 versus IMT taking to the rift for the second game of the day. And as I said, let's just say TF was picked by C9 going roaming pretty much to the top lane at any opportunity he could and basically getting three kills on the IMT top laner, and yeah, that makes this game a big stomp. C9 just absolutely dominated IMT, and I don't think whichever IMT roster was sh this basically put out here would have been the same result, I'll be honest. But yeah, a massive game from C9 here, destroying IMT. The second to last game of the day was Golden Guardians versus FlyQuest in a matchup that we saw Golden Guardians win in a shock prediction as basically what happened was Golden Guardians played to their win condition. They split pushed the map to death and forced FlyQuest to fall further and further behind whereas FlyQuest wanted to team fight, they weren't given that opportunity by uh, Golden Guardians and GG were able to pick up objective after objective and just pressurize the map and put it in a state that was very hard for FlyQuest to get back in considering they were going up against ATF with Destiny which just revealed them on the map as often as he could press that button. Yeah, a very nicely done game coming out of the Golden Guardians here in what could be considered an upset win. And the last game to cover for the week is Evil Geniuses in a matchup against Dignitas. Welcome to EG Pick a Poke Comp with a Jace in the top lane. You've got a Corky in mid, 
Ezreal and Yumian bot. A lot of poke, and especially when you have a trundle in your jungle as well. Let's just say there's not going to be any tanky meatballs on the side of Dig. Dig, though, however, gets some good early game fights in catching out members for of EG. But what ends up happening is EG clean up around objectives. They secure three drakes with ease, and then the fourth one was the con drake that was contested by Dig. Dig being quite far behind at this point due to the objective control of EG. It's managed to steal it, but that's their doom as EG just clean up the fight. Package was available. Corky comes zooming through, picks up some kills, and EG mop the floor with Dig. Go to Baron, push, get, ma get the Drake soul, boom, win. EG win. Pretty simple game here, very nicely done. A game that realistically on paper everyone thought that EG would win. And yeah, good matchup to end out the week. Let's move on to the results and then looking into the upcoming week's predictions. So let's go over them results as before. Now over in the LEC, we did very good. There was a few shock results here, but we did manage to score 7 out of 10 giving us a grand total of 22 out of 35, which is only dropping 13 matches, which is still very strong. I mean, today it we dropped 3 out of, in that week, which technically we've only dropped 10, but add 3 from this week, we've dropped 13. It's slowly accumulating in um, matches we're dropping, but it's still good with staying above the point of being below halfway. As for the LCS, we got 8 out of 10 again. This is kind of a trend here in the LCS. We're going 8 out of 10 every week. 24 out of 30. 6 matches dropped. That is very good. And overall, I'm actually pleased with the results as they come. Dropping only 2 matches a week is still very good. And yeah, we're definitely above halfway considerably by 9 now. But yeah, let's go into the week for predictions. The first matchup of week number four sees XL taking on Vitality in a matchup that most would have predicted would have been lower end of the table. However, Vitality are doing quite well at the moment and I feel they should win this matchup over XL even though XL have just picked up their first win on the th week three's game days. But this should be a definite Vitality win in my mind. The second game is Schalke taking on Mad. I don't need to say much more than Mad should beat Schalke quite easily here. Schalke are still are yet to pick up a win and Mad who have been so dominant in recent weeks should win this game. The third matchup is a little more interesting than most of the others. It's SK taking on Fnatic. Now this matchup for me... I was unsure of who I was going to go for before today, and I've finally decided on Fnatic over SK. This matchup, in my mind, could be close considering the form of these two teams and how well one team's been performing in comparison to the other, but I feel Fnatic will be looking to bounce back here, looking to pick up a win and obviously cement to the rest of the league why they should be feared as one of the top three teams in the league. This is then followed up by another absolute banger of a match as Rogue and OG take to the rift. These two giants in this industry are very, very closely contested in my opinion to how they are currently ranked in the league. This matchup though, I have actually gone with Rogue, um, sorry, OG over Rogue because I just think OG have the capabilities considering how they played last weekend to punish top, put Finn behind, Finn panics when he's behind, when he's camped, if he's forced onto a pick that's not something comfortable he struggles so I feel OG will target that and absolutely dominate this game. And the last game on the Friday is G2 versus Misfits. 
this matchup sees Pinoy returning back to the LEC as the starting ADC for G2. This is an interesting matchup for that kind of thing, as he's going up against one of the most consistent bot laners in the world in Kobe. I feel though this matchup, in my mind, should go to G2, but I feel it's going to be a lot closer than most expect this split. Rogue SK is the first matchup on the Saturday in the LEC. This matchup, I think, is Rogue favoured and should be a Rogue win here. Though SK have looked impressive against teams that are around Rogue and could realistically challenge them. As I say, this could be one of the better matches on this weekend and one that I'm definitely interested to watch. The third matchup on Saturday should be a morale booster for one of these teams, as this should kind of cure the slump of one of these two teams. Now this is Fnatic versus Schalke, and obviously if you know me, you know I've not predicted Schalke wants to split, and I'm definitely not predicting them here over Fnatic. I'm going with Fnatic here. I feel that this should be the slump stopper for them even though I think they're going to bounce back quite heavily on the Friday, this should be the definite bounce back on the Saturday. Up next is the Anarchy Analysis match of the week. It's going to be G2 taking on XL, and this is kind of the point where I want to cover the subbed in ADC for G2 in Pinoy, as well as look at XL as a whole for the first time this split. This should be a very interesting matchup to break down or cast, I haven't decided that bit yet, but um, yeah, it's going to be a good, fun match for these two teams in a way to show why they're this strong or why they should be considered to be a strong team. And finally, our last LEC game is going to be Misfits taking on Mad. This is probably the match of the week, and this is a very fun one, as G uh, Mad are a team that are currently top of the table. They're very, very strong and should be feared as a whole. Whereas Misfits is a team that's come into summer, making a few changes. Obviously, the most notable is their bot lane being switched as B-Boy gets dropped for Kobe and Danix been swapped out with uh, DOS and people have questioned how DOS has performed whereas he's done some good performances on certain champions like Set whereas his Nort play hasn't been the best but this should be a fairly interesting matchup as Misfits have been on the cusp of winning certain matches that they shouldn't or uh, shouldn't be expected to win and this is the sort of point where we get to see how they fly against the team that's just running this league right now. Now jumping across the sea to Friday Night League in the LCS. The first game of the day is 100 Thieves taken on Golden Guardians. This could be considered one of the closest matchups of the week. In terms of the fact that 100 Thieves narrowly lost out against TSM and looked very strong in that performance but on their second day didn't do too well obviously in their performance there they kind of got trounced meteos got punished hard whereas golden guardians had the similar sort of thing going one and one but this should be the point where these two teams show why they are where they are in the league and show why and how good they can actually perform Game 2 of Friday Night League is CLG versus C9. This for me feels like one of those stomp games. C9 should realistically win this and should win in a very dominant style. CLG was the first team in this split to receive a perfect game against them by the hands of evil geniuses. And considering how strong EG are, I feel C9 who's by far the best team in the LCS and possibly in the LEC if they perform there right now in the world. Moving to Saturday, we open things up with Golden Guardians versus DSM. This matchup 
is another way to show how strong TSM are, considering they just beat Evil Geniuses. I think they should realistically beat Golden Guardians. GG, though, are one of them teams that TSM could struggle against because of how they've been playing. Bringing in DeMonte has made them look very, very strong in recent weeks, and they have kind of dropped a couple of games here and there, but they did beat FlyQuest, which is the most notable win for them on last weekend's set of games, so this should be a good close matchup. Moving into our Anarchy Analysis Match of the Week, Dignitas vs 100 Thieves. Yeah, I have to cover this matchup as both these teams are at the bottom of the table. Dig are dead last with zero wins, whereas 100 Thieves have managed to pick up one. I was going to do Dig vs IMT, but this matchup came first. It's the most notable matchup that I want to cover in the LCS this week, so it's got to be covered, and I will break this down as best as I can. EG vs Fly is the third game of the day on Saturday, and this matchup is one of them big boy matches. These two teams finished second and third in the spring split, and this could be a very, very close matchup. Both teams went 1-1 one one last weekend, and this matchup should solidify who could be considered the second best team in the league behind C9, or it could confirm that there's a rock, paper, scissors for second between them and TSM. But for this one, I've gone with EG. I just feel that the way that EG have been performing this split over FlyQuest, like Kumo has stepped up considerably, everyone thought Huni would have took his place by now, but he's performed a considerably better this split than what he did in spring, so this should be the kind of showcase of which team is considered better. Our last game on the Saturday is TL vs IMT. This matchup, realistically, could be interesting. IMT are uh, hopefully starting with Xmiffy, Hakuo, Apollo, and the rest of the Academy quote unquote roster. And this should be quite close as Xmiffy would look to exert revenge against Broxa for taking his spot in the TL lineup. And TL have kind of looked a bit rocky here and there. They're not the best team in the league that everyone expected them to be in summer, but it should be quite an explosive matchup for this, and I think this could be one of the best matches we see this weekend. Moving into the final day or the final four matches for this weekend, kicking it off with the biggest stomp I feel that's ever going to happen in the LCS, C9 versus Dig. This should be a heavy match for C9 to actually win. It should be fairly easy for him, considering how bad Dig form has been. So I think C9 should win this. Probably the hardest set of games for FlyQuest this week is their second opponents are Team Liquid. Now, this matchup should be quite an interesting matchup as well. Similarly with the EG thing, I think that Team Liquid could be considered one of the top four teams this in this split. And I think, realistically, Team Liquid will win this game over Fly. I just got an itching feeling that Team Liquid will show up and absolutely dominate this FlyQuest lineup. Our third matchup for the day is TSM versus CLG. The LCS grudge match. The de league defining matchup. The age old battle in NA. TSM and CLG take to the rift in a very closely contested matchup in my opinion. Both teams are tied for whatever position technically second at the moment. And I'm very, very excited to watch this matchup. I wish I could do the Anarchy analysis on this matchup, but I've already covered TSM this split. I'd rather not cover them until later on, once I've covered every team in the LCS once. But this matchup, I have gone with TSM. I think this should be 
quite a grueling matchup. P.O.B. obviously was the guy that came to CLG and gave them their first win over TSM in over a thousand plus days, I do believe it was. But TSM should realistically win this, considering their recent form. And finally, the last matchup of the week is IMT versus EG. This matchup, I've gone with EG, as I just feel that the quality is on the Evil Geniuses side. IMT are a bit iffy, in my opinion. Yes, they've just picked up their first win, but this matchup, I think, is an iffy one to predict, and I think it's because of how iffy IMT have actually been. Anyway, that's going to be it for this week's predictions as you may have seen or been aware i've changed the graphics slightly for this it's probably what we're going to stick to for the next few weeks obviously i want to keep a certain style to the predictions and not change it too drastically and this should be probably the cleanest and probably the nicest setup i've got for this once again, my name is Zizzo33. If you've enjoyed this video, leave a like down below. Subscribe if you're new around here or if you want to, and I will see you guys later. Peace out.